My name is Mike Daly. I'm the Director of Operations for SUNY OER Services. Um, SUNY OER Services uh, does a lot of things, I, I hope, uh, for SUNY campuses and SUNY faculty um, in terms of providing um, high quality, accessible, and peer reviewed content, um, offering courseware, and, and in particular, Lumen's Waymaker Online Homer, Homework Manager, otherwise known as OM, and Carnegie Mellon's OLI. Um, but what I think we're really here to talk about today and to introduce you to the idea of is the idea of connections. Uh, and in, in this case, the connections that are enabled by the offering that we make available at no cost to SUNY campuses and faculty through Lumen Learning's um, circles or, or circle fellowships. Um, we have a great group of SUNY faculty uh, willing to share their stories from their participation in that um, in Lumen circles this past semester. Um, the, the flow of our workshop meeting event today. Um, will be me talking for a little bit like I am now. We're going to introduce our panel. Um, we'll turn it over to my colleague at Lumen, Julie Curtis, to give everybody kind of an interior look um, at the Lumen Circle's guided tour so you can kind of see what we're talking about. Then we'll have a very open and frank conversation with our panelists and hopefully with you as well. Um, hopefully you all come, came uh, ready with questions um, uh, for our panelists or, or for Julie or for myself. Um, or also Chris Price, who I'm going to introduce right now. Chris Price is from the SUNY Center for Professional Development, a very important, um, crucial partner in this initiative to provide a more robust offering of professional development for SUNY faculty. So Chris, welcome. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, uh, welcome, everybody. I want to thank our faculty panelists. Um, I, I think that this uh, Lumen Circle experience is, to me, the ideal form of faculty professional development because it's mostly faculty working with other faculty and sharing now across campuses, not just on your own campus. Uh, and so uh, for many years, I was the director of the Center for Teaching and Learning at SUNY Brockport. And uh, I've been trying since I left about five years ago to create some of the, those sort of faculty faculty experiences uh, since I moved to SUNY, uh, the SUNY Center for Professional Development. And uh, when this idea came along first with Faculty Guild and now with Lumen, um, uh, it sort of uh, satisfied a lot of that kind of desire I had to see again more faculty faculty interaction and so uh, I actually had the pleasure of participating in a circle myself uh, last fall uh, and got to experience it firsthand and uh, was very happy with the experience myself so um, I think you'll learn a lot from the faculty you hear from today and uh, if you have any questions about the program feel free to reach out directly to me. Great, thanks, Chris. Uh, now I'm gonna turn it over to Julie Curtis from uh, Lumen to introduce herself and to introduce our faculty panel. Thank you, Mike. So uh, as Mike said, my name is Julie Curtis and I have been with Lumen Learning for some uh, several years, uh, not quite since the beginning, but um, it's been a really fun uh, experience, especially seeing the partnership that we've built with SUNY over time and the different dimensions that that has, uh, that has grown. And um, so with that, uh, earlier this year, my role at Lumen shifted and I lead up the work that we do with Lumen Circles, which is a professional development experience focused on communities of practice and connect connecting faculty members with each other to grow uh, professionally in the directions that, that they want, um, focusing of course on improving teaching and becoming very student focused uh, in, in using teaching practices that support student success. Um, so with that, uh, we just this fall came through our first term of offering Lumen Circles fellowships and we, uh, we've been delighted and uh, and also really excited to see the experiences that faculty members have been having um, and in uh, and, and both getting the feedback and what's working really well and is, Lumen has a, has a, our unofficial motto is continuously improving. Um, and so it's been fun to go through this experience and see what's working and take feedback and look at um, how do we continue to expand um, the great work that's happening here and empower faculty members to take advantage of this resource as well. So we are joined today by um, a, a, a varied and interesting set of faculty members. And so I'm going to have them introduce themselves. Uh, I will I'll, we'll call on you based on the order that you appear on my screen. So Tony, you're first, go ahead. Hey, thank you, Julie. My name is Tony Pulaski. I'm a full-time faculty member for the uh, English department at Hudson Valley Community College. And uh, again, uh, as Julie said, this is my first year of working, or yeah, my first term of working with the program. And uh, I have a lot of positive feedback on, on uh, the program itself. 
Thanks, Tony. Jillian. I'm Jillian Nissen. I'm an assistant professor from SUNY College at Old Westbury um, in the bio biological sciences department. And, um, you know, this is also my first experience with lumens, and we'll, we'll be hearing more about that over the next hour. Thanks, Jillian. Julio? Hi, my name is Julio Rodriguez. I'm a full time faculty member at Westchester Community College. I teach in the Communication and Media Arts and Journalism Department. And uh, as same as Tony, this is my first time. I just finished a first term in the Lumen Circle and I loved it. Thank you. Ron. Hi, my name is Ron Keeney. I'm from Alfred State College and I am a full time faculty member in the um, Computer Information Systems Department. And um, it was uh, just a very unexpected positive experience to be part of the women's um, evidence-based teaching circles. Thank you. And last but not least, Stephanie. Hi, I'm Stephanie Huffnagel. I teach full-time at Erie Community College, which is in Buffalo, and I teach in the paralegal department. Thank you, Stephanie. All right, Mike, I think we have an initial question for the panel, and then we'll jump into the guided tour. We do, so I'll kind of bounce around and ask this question, uh, but the one thing I'm taking away already is just the diversity of the faculty that represented, and hopefully um, you're seeing that as well, that I, I think Lumen Circles is really um, an opportunity for a faculty member, no matter your discipline. Uh, we have a, obviously a wide representation here. Um, so Stephanie, we'll work backwards, start with you um, in one sentence or less, and I'll be keeping track of commas and periods. Um, how would you describe a Lumen, Fergal, Lumen Circles Fellowship to one of your colleagues? Uh, I think that it is very interactive and provides, I'm trying to narrow it down in one sentence. It's very interactive and provides concrete strategies that you can actually implement in your classroom or online, in the online classroom. Great, thanks. Um, and Julio, uh, ask you the same question, one sentence, uh, you, on a Zoom call with one of your colleagues, how are you describing what you just went through with Lumen Circles? Uh, I would say it's, it's like a self-assessment of your teaching um, that everyone can see <laughs> in a good way, of course. Thanks. I'm going to switch gears and go to one of our, the, one of our representatives from a four-year school, Ron, um, at Alfred State. Same question. How are you describing your experience? Uh, the evidence-based teaching circles was insightful and positive experience, giving me a constant feedback loop to reevaluate my teaching practices and I love the fact that it wasn't just my own feedback, but feedback from others. We got to hire Ron for sound bites. That was well done. Thank you, sir. Uh, Jillian, uh, from same response at, at SUNY Old Westbury, um, one of your colleagues, how would you describe a Lumen Circles Fellowship? I'm going to tweak what I was going to say a little bit to not repeat what everybody is saying, um, which I agree with everything that's been said so far. But I would like to add that it is um, extremely manageable from a time standpoint as far as uh, our current insane workload with remote teaching. I found it to not be a burden on my time and also extremely worth my time at the same time. I said time 18 times, but you know. <laughs> yep. no. Great. Thanks for bringing that up. I think one of the questions that Chris Price and I often get is, you know, how much time, um, how much time is this going to take? Tony, last but not least, at Hudson Valley, the campus closest to where I am right now, uh, how would you describe Lumen Circles Fellowships to your colleagues? Well, I would describe it in two words, uh, enrichment and enlightening. Uh, that's probably the best way to, to describe it. And, and I think so far between uh, everyone else's responses here, those two words pretty much reflect that. Uh, it's definitely self-reflective in regards to what each uh, faculty member does in regards to what they do, whether it's online or in the classroom, but definitely uh, enrichment, it did definitely it get a lot out of this program, as well as enlightening that, that you learn a lot about yourself along the way as a, as a teacher as well. Great, thanks, Tony, and thanks to the rest of our panelists as well. As a little bit of a teaser, um, we'll have more opportunity to hear from the panelists in a few minutes, but right now we're gonna turn it back over to Julie who's gonna give us a very short five to seven minute uh, preview of the platform and an overview of the experience. So you have a better visual understanding as you start hearing from our panelists in a little bit. Julie. Thank you, Mike. And thanks panelists. It's, um, I, I love hearing how other people describe uh, this experience that we're, that we're building. So thank you for that. Um, is my screen visible to everybody? 
Yes. Okay, yes. great. Um, so as we heard from the group, this is uh, Lum the Lumen Circle is a very interactive uh, experience where you're connecting with peers and together you're going on this journey um, exploring teaching and one of the one of the things that we often hear is it it, it gives me time it gives me uh, uh, it makes a space for me to pause and look at what I'm doing as a teacher and how can I expand and improve that over time. Um, we use this term uh, in higher education from time to time about communities of practice. And it, it tends to be a, a model for professional development that works well because it is bringing peers together who are interested or passionate about something that they have in common. And they do it together and they get better at it because they do it together. Um, I think many of us who have hobbies or, uh, you know, or, you know, things that we like to do, often you want to gather with people who who do it and share and, and exchange tips and ideas and encourage each other. And this experience helps people become braver and better at what they do. And so it's great to be able to bring this model um, into, into what we're doing with women's circles and help, uh, help our, our participating faculty fellows have that similar kind of growth experience. Um, so the pieces of it, and, and we've heard this from the panelists, uh, they're, they're really four key components. One, you're joining a virtual community that connects you with a set of peers who are interested in growing in similar directions. You, as you go through this process, you're exploring effective teaching practices in the context of, of sort of the theme or the direction that you want to grow. Um, it's, a, it's a process that helps you recognize and build on your own strengths, the things that you're already doing well, as well as opportunities to try something new. You have opportunities to reflect and to share and to give feedback to uh, the, the members of your circle. And that I love that idea of it's a self-assessment in a positive way. Um, it's that, and then as I think Ron said, the benefit of having other people to provide feedback and encouragement and an insight. Um, it helps you see your teaching uh, potentially differently and recognize strengths and nuances that you might not see on your own. And then finally, you're also able to uh, see and reflect on the impact that it's having on students. Um, we've talked about this uh, kind of effective practices um, and there's a, uh, within any Lumen Circle, there's a grounding in what we call an evidence-based, a framework of evidence-based teaching practices. And so this is a set of teaching practices that really apply regardless of discipline or modality. There are things that you can do that according to learning science research says, these are the kinds of things that will improve student success. These are the kinds of things that will improve the learning environment. And so uh, as you're in a Lumen Circle, you have the opportunity to explore different dimensions of this framework. And the framework itself has specific teaching strategies or ideas uh, that you can do. And, and it also, your, the self-assessment or the ways that you're, you're looking at what are the learning activities you're planning, what are the lessons you're doing, um, helping you look and say of, of these different practices, of these different dimensions of the learning environment, what am I doing already? And where are there areas that I could potentially grow or address challenges that I, or needs that I might be seeing with my students? Um, and so each of these is, is a, a different dimension. There are things you can do to create an environment that's supportive and builds trust and encouragement and belonging for your students. Um, there are strategies that you can use to create, um, uh, you know, challenging, um, uh, challenging in positive ways, but, but, you know, motivating and encouraging students to reach and, um, and push themselves to learn. Um, there are things that you can do to create more variability in the, the way that you're providing learning opportunities um, that can address different needs um, and, and different, um, uh, different capabilities of your learners. And then there are things that you can do to provide strong organization and structure to guide them through their learning process. And so you have the opportunity to explore this framework and you do that in the context of the theme of the circle that you're part of. So you have an opportunity as you come into a Lumen Fellowship, a Lumen Circles Fellowship, to select the uh, a circle theme or a, a, a general direction that you want to grow as a teacher. And then you're, you're exploring these different dimensions of the learning environment in the context of that, of that theme. And so you can see, uh, and I think the people that we have here participated in, in different themes. And so they can probably speak to that as well um, as we go into the faculty uh, uh, 
panel, I'll go back to the faculty panel. Um, what I want to do uh, for just a moment, though, is take you into the place where the Lumen Circle Fellowships happen. So this is a website uh, that you log into when you're a Lumen Circles Fellow. And it's in this website that it's, it's a virtual community. So the interaction happens here. Um, and when you come in on any given day, it's going to bring you to the, the week or uh, the set of activities that your circle is engaged in that week. And so this is your effectively your homepage when you come in and you'll see the members of your circle over here on the, the left hand side, the one with the purple dot or the purple badge is the facilitator. So each circle has a, a trained and talented facilitator who has expertise in, in building virtual community, helping people make connections, um, providing great feedback and modeling um, the way that that happens for their for their circle and, and, and your facilitators are, they're also former educators with some experience and expertise in the circle theme and so they end up being a, a very rich resource in helping build the community and surface the expertise that's there. Um, on the left hand, or sorry, on the right hand side are the set of activities that you're doing in any particular week. In each week, um, typically there's a reflection. So that's where you do that, that self-assessment. Um, there'll be some prompt that uh, the, uh, something that we're asking you to think about and respond to. Um, and then you have opportunities to collaborate or provide feedback to some of your circle fellows um, as, as they post reflections, then you go through the reflection and provide some feedback. So we can take a look at what this looks like. Um, so a reflection um, typically is going to ask you to think about, or um, in some cases plan for a learning activity. Um, and, and with that, they, they uh, you know, we, we walk you through, it's a, it's a pretty straightforward um, way of looking at what's going on in this activity. So you're painting a picture of it for your circle members so that they can get a vision of what it is that you're trying to accomplish, how did it work, and then using that to provide feedback. Um, so you're identifying, you know, what, what's the, what is it in general that you're trying to do? So just giving it uh, some title about the lesson that you're, you're analyzing, um, what course it's in, um, and then outlining what was it that you were trying to help your students learn? What's the set of activities that you did with your students? And again, you know, just kind of broad brushstrokes to help people understand what, it, what the pieces are that are coming together here. What did you do to assess or help or figure out, did, is this working for my students? Did they learn the things that I was hoping that they would learn? Um, and um, as part of this, if you want to share, uh, you know, share files, share any, any uh, pieces of materials that, that were part of it, you have an option to do that. That's not required. Um, the next piece is it goes to that set of, of evidence-based teaching practices, that framework that we talked about. Um, and here we ask you to identify what are the different, um, what are the different things that were part of, of this experience that you're analyzing. Um, and as you go through this, you can see what the, the definitions are. So it can kind of provide that nudge to you to be able to identify and align the different things that you're doing. And I'll also note that this experience isn't like a bingo card. We're not trying to get you to pick everything um, or build every one of these things into every learning activity. Obviously, that would make for a really challenging and difficult learning activity, both to execute and also for your students to accomplish. Um, instead, what we're trying to do is help you be thoughtful and intentional about the choices that you're making and what the impact is on, on the teaching and learning happening. And then finally, you uh, just analyze what worked, what didn't, what did you learn in the process, what feedback did you get from your students. This is also an opportunity for you to put questions out there and ask for feedback from your circle members. Um, all reflections aren't just, uh, uh, you know, kind of beating your chest, here's how great it was. Um, some of the most productive reflections are ones where it didn't work as well. And so you have opportunities to seek feedback and, and then your circle peers um, will, will share their experiences, share their observations and give you ideas for how to improve and how to adjust in the future. So that's a quick picture of a teaching reflection. Um, I'm also going to show you what it looks like. So when somebody has already completed this, this is a teaching reflection that's already been written. Um, so you can see what it looks like and, and how, the, how the faculty fellow can use uh, some of those teaching framework uh, strategies, those teaching strategies be, could become part of the discussion. And this essentially becomes a common language that you get to use with your circle members to talk about the kinds of things that you're doing with your teaching and learning. 
And then the responses, this is where the members of your circle come back in and respond to the things and ask questions and you know, push forward ideas. So this is where the fun idea sharing can happen as well. Um, so that's a, a quick view of the reflections and the feedback and how they work. Um, one of the other pieces of the, of the um, platform that I'll show you briefly is uh, a place that a lot of faculty fellows really love to explore. So we have a library that has a variety of different uh, resources in it. Um, and the richest of those resources is the tag section of the library. This is where that evidence-based framework resides. And, and so with it, you have the opportunity to come in, learn more if there are areas that you know that you wanna focus on or build. Like um, with the online teaching work, we've seen a lot of interest, for example, in community building and ideas about how do I do more with community building um, in, in the modality and with my students. Um, and so here, there's some great resources that have been curated around community building. Um, so different dimensions, your facilitator might point you to some of these as part of your, part of your circle process. Um, the other thing that we have here is, is we call them exemplars. So these are actually example reflections that um, come from other fellows. So you can come in and see what are, what are real life examples that other faculty fellows have done. And these have been nominated by the facilitators to say these are really outstanding examples that should become part of that curated body of work for other faculty fellows to be able to reference. Um, and so, um, so this throughout the, uh, throughout the library, we have these types of examples for each of the different teaching practices. The last thing that I will show you, um, I'm actually gonna jump back over here, uh, is um, we have, uh, th there's also a profile piece of the platform. So as you're going through a fellowship, you have an opportunity to, um, to if you want to, actually uh, create a public version of the materials and the work that you're doing. Um, there are faculty members who want to use this for a tenure and review packet, for example, or, or maybe up for promotion. Um, this is actually a profile that's not filled out very much, um, but you have the opportunity to create a, a, a public view of, of yourself. So sharing goals, sharing reflections that you've written, um, and as you go through the experience, it actually creates a picture of the, of the different uh, uh, pedagogy uh, practices that you're applying. Um, and, and so with that, this becomes a nice body of, of evidence about the things that you're doing, the things that you're learning that you can then go share uh, with others to show here's, here's the way that you've been expanding your teaching practice. So I'm just gonna stop there and we'll go back to the faculty panel, uh, which is really the, the key part of what we wanna be doing. But if you've got questions or, or there are other things about the platform, we, we can certainly come back there. Thanks, Julie. Um, and again, as Julie said, if there's questions as, as we have our conversation with the panel, feel free to use the chat, the Q&A. Um, we'll certainly uh, jump in and answer your questions in as much as you want to share them. Um, so I'm going to start with a couple questions. Uh, one question I'm going to ask uh, Julio and Jillian uh, to kick it off, and uh, the rest of the panelists. If I see heads nodding, I'll turn to you and ask you to contribute as well. Um, but Julio uh, and Jillian, how did this program impact what you do as a teacher and how you engage with students? So Julio, I'll ask you to answer that question first. So I think for me, with the um, Lumen Circle, it was able. I was able to, and I, I, I think I wrote this even at the end. I was able to assess my own lesson as we went, and I was able to um, get feedback from other faculty members on how did students react to that. And then I would respond and they're like, well, have you ever seen this before? Um, and I, I guess the difference with this is that I really felt like we're always looking at program level and course level, but never like at the lesson level. Um, and I thought that was very interesting because it's like you're, you're, you're breaking out every single lesson that you do week by week and you're able to um, you know, get that feedback every week as you're going through. Thanks. Jillian, uh, something changes to you as a teacher and educator and how you engage students after going through this program or as you were going through this program. Right. So to follow up a little bit on what Julio was saying, um, we were actually very strongly encouraged when we did the reflections. I made this mistake at the beginning um, to talk about in progress lessons, things that you were in the middle of doing in your semester. So you had time to take that feedback, pivot and loop back to that same lesson later on in a later week reflection to sort of discuss how you made the changes, if they were working, if they weren't working. 
um, to just speak sort of on a, a different topic more specifically, I'm in the biological sciences and with switching to remote learning this semester, we had a massive problem with lab classes um, because doing a lab virtually is very challenging. So for me personally, I was teaching um, a lab and it's what I wrote about a lot during uh, my circle fellowship, getting feedback from other faculty, especially my circle seemed to have a lot of people in STEM fields about sort of different techniques that they were using to make labs as authentic experiences as possible um, from sending students home with take-home kits to virtual resources, um, different OER resources was really helpful. And it honestly completely changed how my course went this semester. It went way better than I was expecting, um, you know, beyond my expectations. Great, thank you. And Tony, I saw you nodding your head when Julio was talking about kind of program and, and course level, uh, knowing your role at Hudson Valley, it's probably applicable. I right. um, wanna to speak to that a little bit. Yeah, I, I was looking at it a little more differently here in regards to uh, like if each week, because um, I'm fun, I'm teaching in two modalities, both asynchronous and synchronous. So it was more so, okay, how do I approach each class, uh, especially teaching the same class in two different uh, modalities. So with the Zoom session, I'm thinking, okay, how do I engage the, uh, at least these students? And I'm thinking about the lesson itself. And then I'm thinking, well, how is it really different than what we're doing in a traditional classroom itself? So it, would it be a matter of just uh, setting up groups or working with some other activity that, that basically elicited responses from the students itself. And I think going through each week uh, as I was planning my lesson and, and looking for reflection along the way, with the feedback, feedback that I uh, received from uh, my fellows, it really reassured and uh, and obviously gave me confidence in realizing that I could execute this lesson with you know without any issues, knowing that I was going to get feedback not only uh, from the synchronous learning through uh, through Zoom, but also to even through an asynchronous approach, where it's just I think it's a matter of just communication and working with more of a uh, that voice that we have as teachers, uh, whether it is written or verbal. But I think the big thing was going through each week and saying this is what I'm planning to do and seeing the reaction from others, uh, or at least other fellows, and just, again, just reassured what I, you know, what I could execute in that classroom, whether, again, through Zoom or through the uh, asynchronous learning or platform. Great, thanks, Tony. I appreciate your nodding towards the, the different modalities that I think a lot, I know a lot of faculty are facing, um, definitely face this semester, and probably face in the spring semester as well. Shifting gears a little bit, I'm gonna ask Ron and Stephanie to reflect on and share, uh, what was their most valuable thing they took away from the experience in terms of their own professional growth. I'm going to imagine for many faculty, uh, this isn't your first uh, dip of your toe into the waters of professional development. Um, so just wondering, you know, for this experience, and we'll start with Stephanie, what was the, the most valuable thing that you took away? For me, I think because of when it was happening was really, it was that connection. I'm in a department uh, where we have three full-time people and um, the other two full-time people that I work with are, are also practicing lawyers outside of school. And so their main focus or their like claim to fame is the fact that they're like actually like doing it right still and also teaching. I haven't been a lawyer in over a decade. So um, I don't have anyone to talk to about like pedagogical stuff because I you know if I say things like evidence-based practices they look at me like I that sounds stupid I don't know what you're talking about and not that they're not they're amazing professors um we just have different approaches to things so I really took away from that it's kind of like when you're going through a hard time and like connecting with people who are also going through the same like issue it was really interesting for me um, I'm in the paralegal program and there were actually a lot of people from a maritime school in Maine, I think, or Massachusetts. Um, but it was interesting that we had the same issues, like different schools, different students, different types of um, programs, but we had the same issues. And so it was like really nice to be able to just communicate with people and just think like, oh, it's not just me oh, it's not just my students, you know, like it was just really nice to have that um, community. And then on top of it to get those concrete ideas that are working for other people. Great, thanks, Stephanie. And Ron, uh, there you are, thanks for, um, same question to you. Um, 
interested in your insights, most valuable thing that you took away from this experience? Yeah, it's interesting. You Stephanie brings that up because again, you know, I'm the only one at my college that I know of that um, had gone through this this semester. I think there might have been others in the past. So, you know, finding others that know what you're talking about was kind of difficult. And um, I taught, you know, this past semester of hybrid in person and online. So it was uh, as as Tony had talked about earlier, you know, trying to figure out a, a perfect match of teaching styles that worked well, both physically in the classroom and then remote teaching from at home was, was a challenge. But um, I think one of my, the biggest things I learned, you know, was just to grow comfortable. You know, we all have that, or at least I do, you know, have a, a semester, every semester, a dean or a chair, or somebody's got to come in and sit on your classes. But, um, you know, and that's nerve wracking enough, but this is kind of like every day, you know, that people are going to be critiquing and looking at your stuff. So growing comfortable with um, other people critiquing and looking at my teaching practices and throwing my heart out there and, and saying, well, here's what I did, here's what I tried, here's what worked, what didn't, um, was actually invigorating and, and, um, and, and uh, leavening. It really helped um, alleviate things. It was a connection, as Stephanie alluded to, you know, it was like, wow, I can really talk to people and uh, that are going through the same process here of learning about themselves and what works. and. Um, applying these evidence practices and, you know, our successes and not so good successes. Uh, and it was just, uh, it was really good to be just laying it out there and being visible and having others see us, you know, as they see us. So yeah, it was very, very enlightening. Great, Ron. Uh, I appreciate that, that self-reflection. I'm going to ask, I'm going to stick with you for the next question too. Um, you mentioned you were, you, think you're the only person at your campus, Alfred State, who kind of went through this program. So, you know, now, you, now you're the flag waver, right? And you're going to you know, be on campus <laughs> saying, this is great. So I'm just wondering kind of what, what would be your conversation um, in, a, in a halcyon day when you could have a cup of coffee in, in, the, in the hallway with a colleague um, to say, hey, you should try this. You should, you know, this is what Lumen Circles can do for you. Yeah, I, I, uh, I think, you know, the biggest thing I would say is to, you know, cast off your inhibitions and, and just jump in, you know, just like when you're, you know, some of us learn to swim by just jumping right in the water and going for it. And I think that's kind of the same mindset you have to use, you know, it's, it's more psychological than anything else. What, what do I have to get over to, to try something new and, and to be open to learning from others? And I think um, that's the biggest advice I would give is just say, hey, you know, I, you know, I was kind of apprehensive. I was a little bit hand wringing at first, but then um, you know, once I got into it, I found out how really, really invigorating it was, uh, energizing to uh, have others um, take a look at my stuff and, and give feedback in positive ways, you know, that was helpful. And I think there's a lot to be said for that camaraderie ship that you get out of this, that you sometimes you feel, you know, even if you're physically on campus, you know, you're, you, you don't have too many interactions you know, we might have a once a week department meeting, which is now via, you know, Zoom or we use Teams. But so to, to, this is a much better way or a, an additional way to interact with fellow teachers and um, get some insights about yourself and um, just not be afraid to, to be open to growing. Thanks, Ron. I was hearing echoes of myself when I used to teach at a community college. It was many of the same... Uh, Issues I would bring up in, in working with students as we introduce the idea of peer review or group work, um, getting comfortable um, and, and kind of you know taking taking that first step. Julio, um, a similar question at Westchester Community College, and you've got a robust faculty development program. You know, what's your advice to a colleague um, at Westchester who might be uh, considering uh, participating in Lumen Circles? I'd say do it. <laughs> right, <Buffer> um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I so I really feel like um, I think with this, I, I think the the benefit of, of this is not it's not just a one time workshop or a conference you go to. This is like almost the whole semester. And, you know, you're it's you're just immersing yourself in this whole experience. And I feel like that going through that and spending that time 
um, week after week is really what I think makes a difference than, all right, I have this information now I have to go do, whereas this is you're getting the information and doing and getting that feedback um, within a longer period of time. So I'd say, um, I, and it's it's one of the things that I actually even sent um, in, in the survey that I really feel like a lot of faculty should do this um, if they're really serious about enhancing their teaching and making more creative, especially now when with remote teaching, I think it's more important that we have to keep our students engaged. And, you know, it's, it's a little bit more difficult without having that, you know, being in the physical uh, room together. Um, so I think this is something that everyone should do. And I, I really like it. I can't say in, uh, enough good things about it. Great. Jillian, you mentioned, um, I'm going to turn to you now, you mentioned, you know, bi biological sciences and some very specific challenges in that discipline, especially um, in, a, in a shift to remote or hybrid learning opportunities. Um, was there anything specific that you took away um, from this experience that was applicable to kind of that, that problem? And I don't want to suggest it solved the problem, but anything that you said, oh, this is, you know, something I was doing, but I learned through this, I can do something different. Right. Um, so, I mean, this applies, this particular, so I was in the um, OER and open pedagogy circle, which um, was actually the suggested first circle to sign up for. Um, which it wasn't my first choice just by reading the list, but I said, well, it's a suggested first one. So I'm sure they know better than me. So I picked that as my first choice. Um, and it ended up, I, I'm really glad that I chose that one because it helped me address those specific problems in biology in ways I didn't expect, um, which was that, you know, we can't have students in the lab doing experiments hands-on with equipment. I can't send someone home with a spectrophotometer and a microscope, like that's impossible. But what we could do instead is um, using the, the concept of open pedagogy, which is sort of to not have disposable assignments, to have these renewable assignments that they sort of create content that can be used as um, almost course materials later on to sort of support learning as a group, that they did more sort of literature review projects. I had them, you know, put together, um, you know, websites on certain information. Um, they did some editing of Wikipedia articles, um, like expanding Wikipedia stubs. It was a different way to make them have to go out and um, access primary data and do research in a way that they're not physically in a lab. And it was it was really a very interesting way to kind of address a problem of they can't do experiments. So how do I make them engage with primary data? Well, I make them go look for someone else's experiments and then take that and try and disseminate it to the public, um, which it was it was a lot of discussion in, in the group where we kind of, uh, a few people had that same problem and we figured out ways to do it. Um, and it was really, really helpful for how I, I planned out my semester. Wonderful to hear, thank you. Um, Similar but slightly reworded question for you, Stephanie. Um, I'm wondering if there was, and you mentioned the, the, full, the, the one full-time teaching faculty member in, in your department, at, at, on, well, or Erie, rather, sorry. Um, was there anything that you, through the experience of uh, the, the Circle Fellowship that you went through and you're like, whoa, wow, I didn't know that was me as a teacher. So any like aha moment where you said, you know, positive, negative, anything that made you step, take a step back and say, wow, I never realized that I did that as a, as a, as a teacher. Surprisingly, because I'm such a Debbie Downer pessimistic person, I was surprised to find out that like I'm actually pretty good. Um, so, uh, and you know, it's just not something that you think about too much, or at least I don't. You know, I mean, I'm I tend to focus on what went wrong, and oh my gosh, I can't believe that, and this is terrible, and what am I going to do for next time? And especially with our, I don't know what they're called, our group leader. Um, you know, it really fostered the idea of positive feedback. I mean, talking about, you know, hey, I, I see that that might have went a little, you know, not the way you wanted to, but I really like how you did X, Y, and Z. And maybe next time you might want to try this, you know, but it really um, encouraged me and really made me take a look at my teaching to say, and, and to be able to put a name to what I do, especially with those all those tags and everything, um, it seemed for me very intimidating at first to look at like all like the 20 or whatever tags. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm gonna have to use those. Um, but it was really easy and it was a, a good way because I feel like sometimes we don't know how to talk about these things. Well, I'm good at this, you know, and then recognizing what I was 
doing well at helped me to see the other areas where I could increase. So, I mean, just overall, it was positive to see like, oh, I'm actually, I, I'm doing these things. I just didn't know what they were called. Better naming. Tony, same question. Uh, they've been doing what you do for a long time at Hudson Valley. Anything mm -hmm. that had you say, oh, I didn't realize that was me as, a, as an educator? Uh, I think the big thing and there's something uh, that our facilitator, Michelle Zaros, has said uh, pretty much each week that I'm very detailed in what I do. And I, and I first thought, well, this is what I thought, you know, all of us did. And then realizing, wow, yeah, maybe I, you know, that was like the aha moment. It's like, wow, I am really that detailed, which, you know, means that I can carry it out onto, uh, or at least execute it into the class itself. But I think the other thing, this is kind of playing off what Stephanie had said about the feedback. Uh, a lot of times uh, when I was, you know, looking at uh, the other fellows or the other faculty members, and in, uh, in, in this was in the uh, active learning uh, group that I was involved, um, I was always looking for positive moments for, for each faculty member and saying, wow, this is fascinating. And, and to the point where it's like, I want to be in that person's classroom, because that gave me also a moment to think about, wow, what that person's doing right now could be something I could be using as well, just, uh, just taking... It, uh, it could be an emerging technology tool or maybe just a way to work with critical questions. But it was just one of those things where it's like, uh, it was not just only getting feedback, but also producing feedback where you also learn something from others along the way as well. Uh, I mean, a lot of the fellows that I uh, had interact with every week always had something good, even if they were doubting themselves. I always try to find the positive moment or at least a positive aspect through, uh, through their lesson and realizing that, wow, I do want to be in that classroom because I, I know it's going to be fun. Great. I think that's a nice uh, lesson for us all. Focus on the positive. I know we're nearing uh, a couple of minutes before we our scheduled end. I do want to encourage anybody who's on the call joining us. Um, any questions you have, feel free to to, to post them um, in the Q and A. More than happy to answer them. But I did want to give uh, Julie uh, a minute or so, or ninety seconds or so, to kind of wrap up any loose ends that she wanted to mention um, for those of you who might have joined the call um, towards the end. Thank you. Um, there are a couple of logistical uh, kind of how how does it work questions that I would love to uh, that I would love to do. Is my are you seeing my slide again? Uh, seeing your Slack. Oh dear. Okay, I'm sorry. hold on. You're innocuous. That means I chose the wrong. I chose the wrong <laughs> screen. This happens. Better. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so a couple of quick things just in terms of logistics. The Lumen Circles Fellowship is a nine week program. So there's kind of an orientation beginning week. There's a concluding week where you get to step back and say big picture what, what happened. Um, and then in the interim, you're exploring the different dimensions of the framework. And, and you've, you've heard from the panel about what that's like and the ways that you engage with your community. Um, the question about how long does it take? Um, we design the activities to take one to two hours per week. Um, as we looked at the exit survey data, we found that um, if you're in the, the like math and sciencey area, you're taking closer to like you know one to one and a half hours. Maybe if you're you know if you're an English major, you might be or English uh, English professor, you might be taking a little bit more. Um, and uh, but but in general, uh, people are are hitting that mark. Um, there are times when the facilitator will jump in and say, hey, remember, everybody has to read your seven page reflection. So can we have it not be seven pages next time? Um, I see some of you smiling, you know who you are. Um, but, but this is something we really want this to fit nicely into the other things you're doing and also support the kinds of things that you're already doing as you're preparing, as you're teaching, as you're thinking, how did that go and how can I improve over time? Um, spring circles are beginning. We've got several different start dates and several different themes that we're offering. And so you can uh, let us know your preferences there in, in the next uh, week or so. We're actually going to be starting uh, communicating about um, circle assignments for spring. And so we're excited about that. And, um, and if you have not applied yet and you would like to, um, this is the website. Uh, we can put this in the chat for folks. Um, and there's information about the program um, as well at the bottom of the page. Actually, I think I have that up here. At the bottom of the page is a very simple application form. Um, and so you complete this, you let us know your preferences, and then um, decisions will, will be starting to come um, within the next uh, week or so. We're aiming to have those out um, before the holidays for the applicants that we receive and that we've received already. 
Um, so that was the kind of the logistical piece and the quick advertisement for uh, getting your application in. So thank you, Mike. Thanks, Julie. And I want to thank Tony, Jillian, Julio, Stephanie, and, and Ron for, for taking time to uh, complete the Lumen Circles Fellowship uh, this fall, but also to join us today to share their insights and expertise. Um, always great to hear um, from SUNY faculty and no surprise, it was great to hear from uh, these five as well today. I want to thank everybody else who attended today as well. Um, hopefully this was information, in, uh, both informative and inspiring for you um, to, to learn a little bit more about Lumen Circles Fellowships. You will be giving a recording of this webinar um, as soon as we process it and let the Zoom uh, wizards uh, process the video. Um, encourage you to forward that video on to any of your colleagues um, who may have forgotten to register today, um, who may also be interested in Lumen Circles, and feel free to reach out um, to any of us with any questions you might have. Uh, but thanks again for attending, and thanks to our panelists, and thanks to Julie. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.